state of Kubernetes jobs report, which is um, from a company called uh, Kube Careers, I believe. It's a real shame that their careers is not spelt with a K. That would have been really cool. <laughs> so you can have Kube and then careers with a K. So Kube Careers, guys, if you're listening or watching this, do consider that. I think that would have been cool. But anyway, uh, really good report. I was quite surprised by the the level of depth. And it's only a first quarter report. I don't know if they do this every quarter or not. Um, but um, come across this site. Yeah. And it's hot off the press, so May publication as well. So that's quite that's quite cool. Uh, and they surveyed for, well, a number of different things, but really jobs that require, I think the summary said, jobs that require Kubernetes experience, um, jobs that mention the salary range. I really like that because not many people <laughs> mention the salary range. And even when you're talking to you know, the company or, or the, uh, the recruiters, they're still kind of coy about you know, what the range is. Um, and then it was listed, uh, uh, jobs that are listed by companies and not recruiters, which is even better. So that's kind of maybe putting that extra filter on it, which I thought was uh, was quite useful. Mm. What was, what did you kind of, uh, what were some of the things that you picked up from the, from the report? Well, since, since you mentioned salaries already, mm. I like the fact that they've, put the salaries and also split the salaries out by region mm. because the US or North America and Europe salaries look really quite different. Um, did I have the, the, the average North American Kubernetes job salary is 176,000 and in, oh, they actually don't say it for, for the for Europe, but they say the the highest recorded salary in Europe was one hundred and fifty eight thousand euros. Yes, euros, yeah. That, that was the absolute maximum. That's not even that's what well, not dissimilar. It's not I have to do the yeah. euro to dollar yeah. conversion here, but yeah, yeah. it is very clear from if you see it if you yes. see the yeah um, yes. Uh, yeah, I, I I picked up on. I think the bit that I picked up on was the, you know, how much does a, a Kubernetes job pay? Um, so it ranged from I think one hundred and thirty five thousand dollars to one hundred and eighty eight thousand um, dollars. Where are they? You know, located well. You know, sixty one percent in North America. Um, average range. Um, in North America was $147,000 and in Europe it was 158000 as you said, euros. Um, and the, what else was there? The, the other one I picked up and I don't know, I'll kind of get your thoughts on this. It said the, um, you know, job, the jobs market is seeking software engineers, DevOps and SREs. Yes, I thought that was uh, very interesting, and not only not not only software engineers, but forty three percent of the jobs they published was software engineer. Mm. So very high, disproportionately high. What well, DevOps engineer was ten percent. So forty three, right. and then ten percent was the next one. Right. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm a software engineer myself by background, mm. but and and I wonder whether these are software engineers building a kubernetes platform or if they're software engineers well i would think of that as a platform engineer mm. or a software engineer building an application that would run on top of mm. you know, yeah so are they are they in that sort of devops thing or are they doing that platform engineering thing which you and i talked about a while back didn't we mm -hmm. in our in our previous talk so yeah like, um, are, are they more, yeah are they more of the application developer or are they the mm. platform engineer yeah that's both rolled into software engineer yeah so i guess yeah i guess it's i, I don't know i mean I, I guess it depends on kind of their definition of what do they see as fitting on the software engineer um but that it was interesting those kind of uh, are there uh, the other one i picked up on was um uh, seven to ten jobs kind of allow you to do remote work mm. uh, but the remote work doesn't mean that you actually 
work from anywhere. Uh, it said it's kind of some of it is geographic based, yes, but some of it is time zone based, which is interesting. And that is a factor, I guess. It is. And it makes a big difference, actually. I've seen more of these, you know, must work within North America time zone or European time zone mm. as a requirement. Yeah. And then the, the other one for me, the last one, I think, was the um, popular technologies for Kubernetes jobs. Now, obviously, probably goes with that saying that you need some Docker skills to do that, some containerization skills. But then the other interesting thing that I picked up on, I don't know if you if you saw that chart, um, but it said the, the the charts seem to show a lot more at the top anyway of the chart, it seemed to show a lot more focus on databases and database types. So you had, you know, uh, Postgres, you had uh, MySQL, Redis, and so on. And something like Helm was kind of almost halfway down halfway down the list, which was, I thought it was quite interesting to, to see that. And some of it was, you know, kind of Kafka and Redis and some kind of more, you know, event-driven real-time, you know, type of type of thing as well. So a lot more focus on, certainly obviously in containers, but then immediately after that was kind of a bunch of databases uh, that mm -hmm. you need to be good at in order to, you know, to to do the job. So So I would guess that would be in the description, you know, of the role. Uh, so there's obviously, you know, Kubernetes, obviously containers, and then, you know, you must have, you know, PostgreSQL or MySQL or, you know, whatever experience, you know, to, to go with that as well. And one more thing to note on, mm. on these databases is Postgres and MySQL are old. They've been around a long time, <laughs> right? Compared to some of the other technologies listed. Yeah. yeah so, so hang on, what's going on here? <laughs> Are we, are we moving our old databases into containers then? Is that what we're doing? I think that might be what's happening. I think <laughs> I think a lot of companies yeah. would find it very difficult to switch away from a from a yeah. tried and tested database. Yeah. Um like Postgres and MySQL. But yeah, they're just they're just they hang around forever, don't they? That was just... that was quite interesting. Yeah, because I think it, it did mention a couple of the kind of more uh, you know, databases of service types, the ones in the in, in the public cloud. But actually, mm -hmm. there were, I think, down the list. I, I think I did, I did pick up on one or two of them, uh, but they were down the kind of the, the list of importance. Did, yeah, but did, I feel like if we if we looked at this chart again in yeah. another five years, Postgres yeah. and MySQL would still be there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They'll never. Be. Guys, you're still lifting and shifting. What's going on? <laughs> McKinsey won't like you for that. <laughs> it's, it's not value. <laughs> <laughs> value add, huh? No, it's not no, capturing value. value. It's not capturing value. It's not business value. Yes. Um, okay. And then did you get any, did you look at the section that said um, observability adoption in Kubernetes implementation? So I think that was the last section. I, I, I only kind of skimmed through that, but I was just curious to see whether you picked up anything, anything kind of jumped at, jumped at you from that. I did see this. Um, this didn't surprise me. Well, I mean, they, Grafana and Prometheus certainly didn't surprise me. Mm. Datadog was pretty high, but Datadog is pretty popular. So, mm. yeah, I, I, I think, I, I mean, I, I certainly picked up on that. I, I think, what do you think? Is it, is it kind of, are we still not seeing um, kind of, observability real sort of observability being used in you know with these types of uh you know projects that kind of kubernetes stuff or is it more likely it is observability is just not the the kind that we measure because the the teams that are kind of building these you know kubernetes clusters they're just using whatever the you know the the, the public cloud providers are really offering them so if they have like a monitoring tool or a so-called observability tool, and they just use that. They don't go to like a off-the-shelf tool or something like that. Hmm. I hadn't thought about it that way. Um, hmm. I mean, I feel like the the default now seems to be if you're using Kubernetes, you use Prometheus. Hmm. You're using Prometheus, you use Grafana. Everything else beyond that is yeah. extra extra work, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, so things like I mean. What's the progression of that? I guess that would be uh, open telemetry or something. Would that be kind of the, 
the next phase of that? Mm, I don't. I have not seen a um, much of a pattern. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. If anybody's watching this and knows, please drop something in the comments. I haven't got a clue, really. And I don't know. If, I, I mean, I, I can't remember. I, I may have probably read this already and mentioned it somewhere else in another video. But I can't remember if, you know, if um, how would the adoption be? Was it open telemetry that would need to pick up on, I don't know, it should be the other way around, maybe. Prometheus and Prometheus at least would open, you know, would standardize an open telemetry, I guess. It would be that way around, I guess, if you're kind of you know doing standards. Because I, I know the likes of you know Datadog, Dynatrace, and so on would be um I would assume that their platforms to kind of comply with that type of approach and that sort of standard and the APIs there, they would need to adopt uh, or integrate in you know, open telemetry as part of their um you know part of their platforms. So I'm assuming that's kind of the um the the gold standard you know in sort of an open source and then and cloud native and then every, everything else kind of you know fits it into into their platform i could see that mm -hmm. yeah i'd buy that yeah okay what was anything else in that observability adoption was there any kind of anything any numbers and stuff that stood out for you um i think the top programming language being python was surprising mm -hmm. and not go okay but again perhaps Perhaps they are into they are offering jobs for application developers, mm. where you're perhaps less likely to use Go. Whereas if you're working as a platform engineer on Kubernetes, yeah, you know, Go seems the most obvious. Yes, yeah, that was yeah, that's interesting as well. I think a lot of this may, um, well, I don't know, maybe it will probably kind of steady out and, and stay as it is. But anyway, I, I really fascinating report i thought that was really cool and i've not seen anybody do this before and the fact that these guys are actually presumably recruiters and i've not checked, checked that the company i just really love their report um you know the fact that they're kind of in that space that does give you uh, i think a good sort of indicator to the to the information um so yeah kube careers um state of kubernetes jobs report uh for first quarter 24 i thought that was quite cool Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel to support me. You may also want to check out some of the other videos on this channel. Bye for now.